Hi, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and today we're going to talk about SD cards. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Okay, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, what memory card should I get for insert your device here? Whether it's drones or cameras, whatever, everyone always wants to know what type of card they need for their machine. And it's not as complicated as it may seem. However, there's three different standards that have come and gone over the last few years, and you will find pretty much all of them on a modern SD card. So this is a Hoodman Steel 128 gig card, 1500X V60U3 8K SDXC2. What does all this mean, all right? Well, I wanna try and make it as simple as possible for you and make sure that you're not overspending on cards and still getting the right cards that you need. So depending on your camera, it's gonna be able to save at a specific megabit rate. So like a um, Phantom 4 Pro or a Mavic 2 Pro, these uh, drones can do 100 megabits. It sounds like a lot, 100 megabits, it's huge, right? And my Sony a7 III will do 50 megabits or 100 megabits, other cameras can do even more. So what kind of card do you really need? So let's take a look at some of the different symbols that are on here that are gonna help determine the type of card that you need. Now in the past, it was pretty easy. We had different class cards, class one, class two, class 10. Don't worry about that. That's an old standard. Then we had the U, which is the UHS speed. And typically we're gonna see U3, U2 on these. So we definitely wanna make sure we get a U3 card, but is that still gonna be fast enough? And what we need is the video speed. So if you don't see a card that has a V and then a number on it, it's probably not gonna be fast enough. Now it might be, it, it certainly might be fast enough for your uh, equipment, but it just means it's an older card that hasn't been tested to the new spec. So we gotta do some, some math here. And when we look at the different speeds, one big thing that you're gonna notice right away is that your cameras talk about the megabit rate. The speed of the SD cards is measured in megabytes. That's a huge difference. So it's eight megabits per megabyte. Yeah, so things can get a little confusing. But let's break it down very simple. If we have a camera that can shoot at 100 megabits, which is a very common standard on most cameras, divide that by eight. What do we get? We get 12.5 megabytes a second. So if we look at the speed of a U3 or a V30 card, we're gonna see a speed of 30 megabytes per second versus 100 megabytes. So let's keep this very clear, right? Our camera is gonna do 100 megabits, therefore we need 12.5 megabytes per second. Now, the U3 and V30 spec is 30 megabytes per second. So it's over double the speed that we need to handle a 100 megabit camera. So as long as your camera is not doing more than 100 megabits, a V30 card is going to do just fine. So what I don't want to look for anymore is the class ratings or the U ratings. I'm really only looking at that V rating. So as long as I see V30, I know that it's gonna handle 100 megabits. Now this particular card here is a V60 card. So a V60 card can handle quite a bit more. So let's do some quick math here. And if we take 60 megabytes per second, 60 times, eight, right? We get 480 megabits. So if <laughs> there aren't a lot of cameras that can do 480 megabits, at least not in the consumer or prosumer realm or entry level uh, 
commercial realm, you're going to see that on much higher end cameras, things that are actually starting to push into the 8K range. So if you have a camera like that and it's doing 200, 400, actually you need 480, 480 megabits, then a V60 card is going to be what you need. The next rate I'm rating up from that is a V90 card. Now it's pretty easy to remember these, right? A V30 is 30 megabytes per second. A V60 is 60 megabytes per second. And a V90 is 90 megabits or 90 megabytes per second. So if we take 90 times eight, that gives us 720 megabits. Now, I'm kind of glad my cameras aren't shooting at 720 megabits because that would be a lot of data. That would be seven times the amount of data that my a7 III is doing. Now, while that might be awesome for color grading, it's gonna make a huge difference when it comes to data storage, which is a whole nother issue that we'll talk about at some other time. But keep in mind, when we're looking at SD cards, keep it simple, right? Take the number that the V is, multiply it by eight, and that gets you your megabits, right? So a 100 megabit, we're gonna divide that by eight. We get 12.5. We can get away with not quite a V10 card. That's only gonna be 10 megabytes. We need to go to the next step up, which is gonna be a V30 card. If we're doing 200 megabits, what do we need? 200 divided by eight is 25. We're still in the realm of a V30 card. So now while that takes care of the speed to the camera, what the camera is writing to. The other big difference that the speed of the card will make is how fast it transfers to your computer. Now you gotta make sure you have an appropriate card reader. If you just have a old USB 2, you know, class three USB uh, card reader, you're only gonna get the slow speeds no matter how fast your card is. If you get a nice, fast UHS-2 USB-C um, memory card reader that can handle these super fast data rates, it's going to transfer from the card a lot faster. So not only is a fast memory card good for whatever camera you need, the faster the card is, the faster you can dump that content to your computer. So I hope this helps under, helps you to understand the differences in the micro SD cards and the regular SD cards, uh, even the CFast cards. If you're looking at those ratings, I hope that makes it a lot easier. This has been Kerry with FilmmakerCentral.com. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.